Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm just up in the Galloway Forest Park for a couple of nights wild camping. Um, I recently bought a, an hammock, hammock from Norway and I want to give it a go, desperate to try it out. It's, um, it's going to get cold tonight, down to about minus four according to the Met Office so <clears throat> It'll give us a good opportunity to test it out. Um, I'm just trying to find somewhere to camp at the moment. I've just left my rucksack um, at the same spot I camped uh, in August on my motorcycle. But um, it's a little bit waterlogged down there because it's, it's like rained for weeks here in the UK. It's going to be clear over the next couple of nights though. You can see the sun's finally finally come out. So I'm just going to check this area out up here and see if it's any any drier. I couldn't be bothered to haul me backpack all the way up here. It's full of beer again and it's like I weighed it there was 26 kilograms. Um, I'm a bit out of practice so it's been a bit of a struggle walking in here if I'm honest. But um, the sun's going to be dipping soon. Uh, what month are we in? I think is it December yet? End of November? But um, it's going to get dark probably in a couple of hours so I want to get camp established and perhaps look for some firewood. This area looks a bit better, certainly a bit drier. Uh, still got a nice view, nice view of the lock. I just say how easy it is to get, a, get down into the water. I haven't brought any water with me, I've just got the, the Sawyer mini water filter. Oh, it's actually a bit of a... It doesn't look great for getting down into the lock. Let's have a look, let's have a proper look, do things properly. Oh, that's not too bad. Ah oh, yeah, that'll do. Be able to to get a pot of water out of there, I think. Get some water filtered. This looks a slightly better area than, than where I've left my my backpack. So I think I'll go and fetch it and uh, just see if I can pitch up here. I think I might have gone a bit overboard with the food. I'm only here for two nights, I've got loads of stuff. <laughs> but um, it's going to be cold, you know, and you can't really let yourself go hungry. So I've uh, got a few craft ales, um, a few more craft ales. There's a Cornish pasty in here somewhere as well, some broccoli. Um, yeah, where the hell's the hammock? I haven't forgot the bloody thing. <laughs> One of the great things about these Fjallraven bags is that you can open them from the, the front here so you don't have to kind of take everything out of the bag to get what's at the bottom. So, there's the hammock. I'm just going to see if the strap will fit around that tree. I don't think that's going to do it actually, I'm going to have to look for a, a thinner tree. 
the only issue with these trees here is there's lots of kind of big heavy branches hanging off I mean there's not any wind forecast for this evening but you've got to take precautions haven't you I'll have a look so there's a much thinner tree here this one here um, so the hammock strap fits around that quite comfortably and I'll run a, a tarp line over the top um, I find that with the um, hammock I have actually just tried it out in the garden I haven't used it I haven't slept in it this will be the first time I've actually used it proper I find that um, you really have to hang it quite high I usually use a DD hammock and there's not much of a need to get it high up in the tree but I find with the hammock that uh, it's fairly important so uh, so yeah I'll get cracking before before dark For one end of the top, uh, the, the ridge line, I tend to just use a carabiner, just makes it less faff, and use a knot for the other end. So the hammock comes with two tree huggers. This is the uh, 2019 model, so they're separate. I think uh, previous uh, models, the um, tree huggers were attached. So you just kind of loop it around the tree like that and you've got this little metal bucket, uh, buckle that fits onto the side of the hammock. I'll show you that in a moment once I've got around the tree. Brewdog, Dead Pony Club, Session Pale Ale, 3.8%. So, the hammock, um, it's colour coded. You've got like red and green tabs. Now, I believe the green one, yep, is the starboard, and the red one is the port side. So, if I remember correctly, port is on the left looking out. So I kind of want that view, I think. Um, so the red one is going to go there, which means the green one goes on here. So, yeah. So the bag's actually attached to the hammock. And uh, that's that little clip I was talking about. And I'll just show you how it, uh, how it clips in. Yeah, so you've just got this, um, this buckle here. Now it's supposed to face that way. That's the correct way. So all you do is you just pop it in there like that, which is easier said than done. It just goes through like that and you've just got to make sure that it's pointing upwards like that and there that's, uh, that, that's fixed in. And then you do the same on the other end and there uh, the hammock's up. I had to buy a new mat for the hammock. I have a, um, a Thermarest Neoware and the baffles kind of run um, across the mat and that's no good for the hammock. You need um, the baffles to run down to give the uh, base of the hammock that uh, rigidity. Rigidity, is that a word? Yeah, um, so I, I ended up buying the, this is the one that they recommend. I mean, uh, hammock do make their own mat but um, this one's recommended. It's the Exped Sign Mat 7. 
um, long and wide. I've actually got a temperature rating down to minus 17, so you know I think I might sell me Thermarest and just use this, um, you know, as my go-to sleeping mat. But um, this is one of the ones with those weird self-inflating pumps inside them, which are a bit dodgy. You've kind of got to lay it on the ground and press it to get air into it. So I'm, I'm going to open it up and let the uh, let the pump kind of expand a little bit before I get onto that. So the x bed has the, this kind of self-inflating system, which I find a bit annoying actually. Um, you've basically got like a, a foam insert here and uh, an inlet valve. And you're just supposed to kind of blow the, the mat up by letting the air uh, fill the foam and then that will pump it into the chambers. But I find that once you get it um, quite highly inflated that it's it's quite difficult to, to pump. And um, ideally I'd like to get it rock solid to get it in the hammock. But you can buy those um, those bags. You can get a valve adapter and put one of those rolly squeezy bags, whatever they call them, and in there to blow it up. So I think I might look into one of them. Something else to carry in the backpack. So I've got the mat blown up and it's just a case of sliding it into the hammock now. The only thing I'm uh, concerned about is it's it's quite mild at the moment. It's probably about five, six, seven degrees perhaps. And tonight it's due to get down to minus four. Um, and you wonder if the mattress is, I mean the air is going to contract, isn't it? Uh, and I wonder if I'm going to lose some of the uh, some of the uh, the stiffness of the mat, but uh, we'll have to see. <laughs> and with the way that this thing pumps up, it's not as if you can kind of just get it out and blow into it. You're going to have to take the whole thing out and give it the old resuscitation carry on. So uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to get it get it into the armor. Right, so there's just a zipped pocket here. And you just slide your, your mat in. that up and uh, Bob's your uncle. Now this this hammock or hammock hammock whatever you want to call it it's called the drama I think that's how you pronounce it. Some people call it the drama. I'll tell you what the first time I got into this thing it was a drama. It's actually quite difficult and takes a bit of practice. Um, I think the the most accepted method is to kind of grab this bit, fold it up, and then kind of do it that way. As you can see, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not exactly foolproof. Um, so yeah, you've really got to shift your weight quite far into the back. So that's the hammock all set up there. I'm still using the DD Dura 2 sleeping bag. Got an inflatable pillow there. Um, this hammock does come with a bug net, which is in here. And you kind of zip it all the way around, but I'm not going to use it tonight. It's going to be freezing. I'm not that worried about insects. Um, yeah, it's quite a nice hammock. You've got, you've got a little bottle holder here for your beer, a couple of pockets. Um, You've got a big stash pocket here for your boots or your shoes. When you take them off, you can get them in there. Uh, there's another pocket there. I guess you can store a few things down the side if you like. Um, as I said earlier, the bag just stays attached so you can just pack it up. But um, yeah, it's quite nice. The only problem is uh, you have to go and find a stick and put it in these two holes here to keep the footwell up. And you have to do the same at the head end here, but apparently Amok are developing some poles that, that they're going to put into production. But um, yeah, I mean the only problem with it is it's actually quite difficult to get in. 
it's a good job it's going to be dark when I get into this thing because it's hilarious so I've just put the the DD XL tarp over the hammock this is a 4.5 by 3 meter uh, tarp probably ideal for the winter if you're gonna encounter some um, hostile weather which you often do uh, rain and wind this is going to give us a bit of extra protection over the the 3x3 three three, which does fit over the hammock in a diagonal formation but um, if you pitch it like this it, the 3x3 three three is a little bit exposed I think probably ideal for the summer Well folks, I've managed to get a decent bit of firewood in. Uh, it's quite a bit of dead pine up there, so I've got an axe and a saw, and I've got some good good wood. Um, yeah, if you watched my, my last uh, trip up to Norway, you'll have seen me complaining about the Laplander folding saw. A lot of people recommended that I buy a Silky, but um, I had a look at them, and uh, the they look very good but they're quite pricey about 55 60 quid and i thought you know what i probably don't use it enough the saw enough to warrant that type of price so i ended up buying a kind of like it's not a chinese copy it's a japanese copy of the the silky saw it's made by a samurai <laughs> so it's a samurai saw as opposed to a samurai sword but um yeah i mean it's just a typical pull saw a pruning saw Seems to work fine, comes with a plastic holster, um, yeah, there it is, it's like $24.99 from Amazon, it seems to get loads of good reviews and people who, who uh, use pruning saws regularly commented that it's just as good as a silky but for half the price so it'll do for the time being, but um, yeah it's getting dark, the wind's died down completely so I think I'll, I'll get a fire on a bit later, uh, obviously I'm in a pine forest so I'm going to take extra care. There is a, a little fire pit here but there are no stones around it so I'm just going to keep it fairly uh, fairly moderate even though it's been raining for weeks and the forest is absolutely soaking wet but I think it's going to get cold later on and I want a bit of warmth. I might go and get some some water filtered from the lake as well and get it boiled while the fire's on. Too much stuff to do when you're wild camping, you never stop. Always something needs doing. Especially in winter when um, you know the, the daylight hours are, are limited. It's about four o'clock, the sun's gone down. So uh, yeah, let's see what the night brings. So I've decided to get the coffee spit out there. And I've got some uh, pre-marinated lamb steak on there. I've got some salad and uh, a couple of flatbreads as well, like <laughs> so I'm going to have kebabs for me tea.
morning folks, uh, I've just, just got myself a, a brew on, uh, it's about half nine now, I've been up for a while just mooching about, just enjoying some of the scenery, the, uh, the lake is beautiful, I had a really nice dawn and there was just uh, mist blown across the, uh, the top of the still lake, it was fantastic, but I um, had a really really good night's sleep in the hammock, I have to say it is incredibly comfortable. Um, far more comfortable than the DD hammocks that I've been using over the last year. Uh, this thing is a different league. Um, obviously, it's it's uh, it's more expensive than the DD hammocks, but uh, in my opinion, it is well worth the money. Um, I bought it for for a number of reasons. One of them was because Tris doesn't like sleeping in the in the DD hammock. Um, and a lot of people have the same issue. I think it's because you, you feel enclosed in them. The material kind of, um, you know, it's kind of surrounds you and, and presses into you. And, and if you're even the slightest bit claustrophobic, I don't think people really get on well with them. But that hammock, it is, it solves all of those problems, but it just makes, uh, it gives you such a level sleeping platform. And I'm someone who likes to sleep on my side occasionally and uh, it's perfect in there, you don't have to worry about it at all, you just roll over and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. You can even, even sleep on your front if that's, uh, if that's your thing. I never sleep on my front mine, but obviously people do. So yeah, it um, yeah, gets a big thumbs up from me, I think it's uh, fantastic. Um, it's slightly heavier than the DD, but only by 50 to 100 grams or something, so nothing really substantial in terms of extra weight you'll be carrying. I guess with the uh, DD hammock you, you, you can have to carry an under quilt as well or the under blanket and then this you have to carry um, an inflatable mat so it's six and two threes really and, and I think this is a much better unit. The only negative I can think of is it's not very easy to get in and out it kind of because um, you've got to place your center of gravity in the middle of the hammock for it to work properly so you've got to find a way to get yourself from like standing up next to it into the middle of it and it's a bit tricky <laughs> I put it up in the garden at home the first, when I bought it and I, I just hope my neighbors weren't watching out the window because I got in and just like slid out onto the floor about five times so um yeah what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just kind of like jumping into the hammock. I mean, it swings a bit, but it just seems to be the the easiest way to get in. Uh, getting out, you kind of just step to the side and get out sideways. I'll show. I'll, what I'll do later on is I'll show you. It might be a bit of a um, you've been framed moment, like. But uh, yeah, this coffee's nice. My original plan for today was to pack up and and walk further up the Raiders Road and perhaps see if I can reach the Otters Pool and camp there, but I'm thinking about just staying here for the day actually. It's uh you know we're in winter, the days are short. Um last night I managed to get a good fire going, but it took a while to get the wood prepped, so, you know. I don't really like battening and chopping wood in the dark. It's not the safest thing to do. So uh, I think this morning I might just go for a bit of a walk around here and then really just start to get the firewood prepped for the night because um, it was overcast last night. It was cold when I, when I got into camp but uh, it's going to be clear all day and all night so it's going gonna, it's gonna to just be freezing so definitely going to have to work hard and get some, uh, some firewood sorted. But yeah, what a great place. It's worth the effort to, you know, just chuck a backpack in the back of your car and some sleeping gear and just head out, especially at this time of year when you know that no one's going to be around and you can get the place to yourself if you're willing to just kind of like deal with the cold for a bit. But uh, it's not that much of a hardship in my opinion. In fact, I actually prefer it. I mean, I slept in the um, the hammock last night without any without the bug net on you know there's no fear of getting your face kind of eaten off by midges or 
or any of that carry on. So I actually prefer this time of year. And plus you get, when you get it still and cold and there's a, like at the moment over there, you can see the, the frost on the reeds and the mist on the lock. It's perfect. It's, uh, it's what it's all about. Just been down the lake to fill the uh, Pathfinder bush pot with some more water. Gave myself another coffee on the go. I didn't bring any water in with me on this trip. I've just got the um, Sawyer mini water filter. Now, this is the second one I've had because the first one froze when I was up uh, on my canoeing expedition at Loch Awe last January. Um, the temperatures got down to about minus 12 during the night and I did have the the, um, the filter in a bag but um, I guess it still froze and uh, if, if the water inside freezes it actually ruins the system so um, I went away I think in the Easter time and I tried to use it it was actually in, in, in this region of Scotland and the water was just flowing out of it all over the place so it, uh, it had broke so what I'm doing now is I'm, uh, I'm, I'm filtering the water then I'm wrapping the, the filter up in a plastic bag and I'm keeping it in my pocket next to my body so it doesn't freeze or hopefully it won't freeze. It shouldn't freeze like if it does I've probably died of hypothermia and I'll be lying on the forest floor frozen to death. <laughs> what? <laughs> but uh, yeah, really pleased with this little pot. I've done a little review of it when we were up in Norway used it extensively there it's just uh i think it's just the perfect size you know it's not too big but it's um it's big enough to be useful i think it's two liters you can get in here and what i've got for food today i've actually got those wayfarer boil in the bag meals now it's the first time i've ever tried those i've always been a bit wary of them you know in case they taste like crap and a lot of them that i've looked at have literally just been full of so much crap you know where you look at the ingredients on something and there's you just don't recognize any of it as food so i tend not to bother and just bring fresh food in but then obviously the weight starts to creep up and it's a hassle when it gets dark early um so yeah i've got a chicken curry and rice and a beef goulash <laughs> sounds quite posh actually i'm just gonna you know get the fire going in the evening and just boil one of them up in uh in the uh, Pathfinder, so yeah, but um, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just enjoying myself up here. It's beautiful. Well, guys, it's uh, time to go and get some wood. I think. It's almost half eleven, which means I've got approximately four hours. <laughs> that actually sounds like a long time, but anyone who's um, been out in the woods looking for for dry firewood, um, you know how long this this carry on takes. And our trip to Norway recently, I just spent so much time collecting wood. And processing it. Um, yesterday I got a good stash of wood together but I was a bit lazy and I didn't I didn't really thin it down. I needed to split the pine in the kindling and uh, I didn't bother I just kind of split it in half with the axe and it didn't burn well at all. So in the night I had to you know when it was dark I mean it was still only what five o'clock I had to start getting the knife out and and battening the wood down so I'm gonna spend the, this afternoon getting everything processed properly because it's actually it's freezing and I want to get the fire going uh, in a late afternoon
well folks I've pretty much got all the wood prepared for this evening um, so it's about off two in the afternoon now and the sun's already getting pretty low in the sky um, so I'm gonna have some lunch I've got the uh, Wayfarer uh, chicken curry with potato and rice uh, it's just a boil in the bag jobby so I've got the um, Pathfinder pot on the uh, Trangia stove and when that starts boiling I'll just whack this in for 10 minutes um, if it tastes as good as it looks on the picture on the front like I'll be happy what I'll do now while the uh, while there's still a bit of light I'll go and give you a, a good look at the hammock a bit dirty here so yeah I'm just gonna get in the beast again It might take a while for this thing to stop. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, there's no easy way to get in these things. <laughs> I'm gonna knock the camera over in a minute. <laughs> right, yeah, so there's a couple of straps here, and if you pull them down and sit forward a bit, you end up with a fairly comfortable chair so on the evening you know you can sit in here read your book you can get the bug net round you in the summer um, you've got your little bottle holder here for your beer or whatever or if you're drinking water or whatever um, yeah and then you've got this as I said this arm steel line across here which I mean I've got my torch attached to it and I've got the, the Yuko candle lantern on it but I guess if you bring along a couple of carabiners you can hang you know whatever you like across there really if you need things at hand the only problem is um, in the morning you know I was going to get up and get a cup of coffee and, and sit like this but I mean you've just seen the carry on getting in the damn thing um, coffee's just going to end up everywhere so uh, I don't know mm. I have to apologise, the sun's just blinding his hair, probably looks really contrasty. Um, this is lovely, really, really nice. The Wayfarer uh, chicken curry with rice and potato, really, really tasty. A bit pricey at like four and a half quid mine, but um, yeah, it's just really nice. Definitely recommend it. Well, it's time for a beer, folks. It's half three. <laughs> uh, but you know, the sun's almost set. Uh, what I've got, I just picked up a couple of um, IPAs uh, from the supermarket just before I left. And what I've got here is uh, the Wild Beer Company Pogo. Pale Ale and Passion Fruit in Orange and Guava. I'll just give you a look at the tin there. Looks very nice like a stag's head on the front. I mean, we're in Scotland, why not? Plenty of stags around here. Um, so yeah, so let's have a look at the blurb. A beer inspired by a childhood fruit drink growing up in Hawaii. Passion fruit, orange and, gu and guava leap out of this refreshing pale ale. A tropical hit in a thirst quenching hoppy beer. Sounds nice. Sounds very summery. Oh, fruity on the nose, fruity on the nose. Oh, oh, that is refreshing. Wow, that is lovely. Sweet and fruity, very lively. Oh, wow, that is nice. It's like there's a party going on in my mouth and everyone's invited. Wow. Mmm. 4.1%. I wonder where it's brewed. West Country? I don't know. Wildbeerco.com. I'm going to check them out. That is a really, really good pale ale. 
I think if you um, if you prefer your beer to be a bit more bitter, this might not be the drink for you. It's almost like a pop. I mean, I don't drink a lot of sweet, well, I don't drink any sweet drinks. I don't like Coke or any of that stuff. Um, or fruit juice, really. And this is kind of like, it's halfway there. It's like a fizzy fruit juice. Mm. You can get, you can pick up a, a very subtle, very subtle bitterness on the palate. Yes. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Morning guys, um, pretty chilly at the moment, it got down to minus 5 during the night which is the um, minimum temperature rating of my DD Jura sleeping bag, so um, I wasn't cold but I was just on the edge of comfort. Um, the Exped mat that I've got in the hammock uh, is rated down to minus 17 and that was warm, there was no uh, cold coming up from below. But I was just on the edge of, of comfort really last night and I was wearing this North Face down jacket, this other down jacket. I have only got a t-shirt on underneath. But uh, yeah, pretty chilly. So I got up at about seven o'clock. It was so cold, I just started looking for wood and I've got a fire going, which is nice. Um, I just grabbed me squeezy system. You know, I'm just filtering water with the, um, with the Sawyer mini filter. So I pre-filled this last night, you know, trying to be efficient so I can just filter it in the morning and get get me coffee up, but it was frozen solid. Uh, so I couldn't do anything until uh, until I got the fire going and I had to melt the water, get the coffee on, but I've got one now, so happy days. But yeah, it was a really peaceful night. It's great just falling asleep to the sounds of the forest. You can just hear like the owls hooting and the odd bird of prey out and about but um, the lake's actually it's not fully frozen over but there's a good layer of ice on it which which I think just demonstrates how cold it is but um, I had a little bit of kindling left over from last night so I put it I just put it to one side and I was able to get that alight this morning and then get a get a load more logs that were just lying around got the saw out done a bit of chopping and uh, this should last us for an hour. And then I guess um, probably just going to pack up and head back to the car, drive back home. Should have brought me ice skates.
Right, so this lock is uh, it's frozen. I should have thought about this last night. Never had to do this before, but uh, unreal. <laughs> I need some water. I've got like a, I've got um one of those kind of ready mixed porridge things, like a cup of porridge that I want off for breakfast. So I need water and I need a brew. So uh, let's get going. Well, that's me done for this trip, folks. Um, I've got all my rubbish with us on the back of the backpack there. Um, the fire pit was already here when I arrived. Uh, this is a popular camping spot and I guess that fire pit is for people who are camping here. So I've just extinguished it with about four um, potfuls of water. And I've left it uh, either for myself for next time or for someone else. So uh, I've left the, the place just how I found it and I'm going to march on back to the car now. So as ever, thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next one.